Welcome, everybody. Uh, this panel is titled uh, Startup Spotlight, Who's Building What on Filecoin? Uh, I've actually known uh, the four co-founders here and founders uh, a, a reasonably long time, a few years. Uh, some of them kind of came through hackathons, progressed to accelerators, raised seed funding, and now are having tremendous traction and impact in the Filecoin community. Um, I'm a former founder. I know how difficult it is to be a founder, especially in Web3, but these are four of like the folks I look up to as models um, that are going to break through and really cross the chasm in Web3, accelerating the transition from Web2 to Web3. Um, the tools that they're building, I really do think are going to reach tens, hundreds of millions of people and billions of people over the coming years. So I'm super, super excited to dive into a few topics and, um, and just understand how they think about building in our ecosystem. Um, maybe I can ask each of them to introduce themselves and their companies, uh, and we can start with Sasmeet uh, from Huddle01. Yep, uh, so hey guys, my name is Sasmeet, and I am co-founder and CTO of Huddle01.com. Uh, so at Huddle, what we are building is basically a decentralized version of Zoom, which is a product, and then we'll convert this product into a protocol, uh, which will be basically uh, the RTC layer of the L1s out there. So, yep, that's there. So. Great, awesome. Uh, Nandit, you want to talk about Lighthouse? Hey everyone, I'm Nandit, and at Lighthouse we're building perpetual file storage protocol that allows the ability to pay once and store your files forever. Uh, we, are plan we are doing it natively on Filecoin and aim to do it much cheaper than Rweave. Um, and the key thing is we, when we are building our infrastructure tools at Lighthouse, we take the end user in mind. So as a developer, you cannot just even store perpetually with us, but also do things like encryption, access control, store your private data, build token-gated resources, and also like use a dedicated gateway to stream files at a high speed. Like you can even stream like 4K videos. So like taking end developer into consideration. And we are excited about what we're building. I was uh, looking at a 4K video that was streaming using Lighthouse just yesterday. It's unbelievable the quality uh, that, you know, and the how Web3 tech has evolved to support that. So that's really, really cool. Um, Laura, do you want to talk a little bit about FileDrive? Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Laura. I'm the co-founder of FileDrive Labs. So we are actually a technical team like focusing on provide storage solutions based on IPFS and Foycoin. Uh, now we uh, currently like to provide a, a kind of solution that I watch in the way like IPFS plus Foycoin. And we also develop a series of tools, applications just for our users to like enjoy their storage uh, journey with IPFS and the Foycoin at the same time. And since right now we are mainly focused on uh, like Foycoin Plus, like the retrieval market, we want to try our best to like contribute to the ecosystem uh, in the best way. And we also the, uh, win the championship of Jupyter IPFS Hexon last year. So we think uh, as our team, what we want is to like everyone enjoy and also to uh, explore our business models in this uh, incredible ecosystem. Thank you. Great, fantastic. Thank you, Laura. And Masa, you want to talk a little bit about Secured Finance? Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Masa, Secured Finance founder. And we're building on uh, decentralized peer-to-peer -peer capital markets for digital assets. And we are a team of uh, tra traditional finance experts. So we are seriously building our Filecoin and Bitcoin Ethereum related to DeFi projects. Um, so we're happy to support Filecoin ecosystem. And we started out of HackFS, Hackathon. It's uh, supported by Protocol Labs and uh, Ethereum Foundation. And uh, yeah, since then our journey um, came here and uh, finishing a seed round fundraising. And uh, right now we are developing a um, lending market to support Filecoin miners' uh, borrowing demand and also turning into an investment opportunity. Uh, since uh, I've been talking with uh, traditional finance investors, they are so happy uh, to support Filecoin, like a long-term view. They're happy to take long-term risks. They can invest in Filecoin. So we are building all the big system. So we are like a matchmaker between investor and Filecoin miners. So we can smoothly uh, integrate the Filecoin uh, mass adoption. So we're happy to be here. Fantastic. Thank you all for introducing yourselves. Uh, 
So I have a few questions that I'll ask, but um, you know, if anyone in the crowd has some questions, maybe we can come back to that at the end. Maybe you can put up your hand and you can ask Elsa to kind of pass a microphone in a few minutes here. Um, so I wanted to uh, talk about why you entered the Web3 space and specifically for some of your startups, what are some business models that have been possible on Web3 tech that just weren't possible in a Web2 paradigm? And maybe I can start with um, Sasmeet first. Yeah, uh, so it was during my college days that I actually stumbled upon. So I was an open source programmer back then. And then uh, so uh, the, I stumbled upon Bitcoin. And during that time, people used to fork Bitcoins. And they made Litecoin and all of those things. Ethereum and everything started boiled down and all of those things. And then Ethereum came. So I started hacking around the smart contracts and all of those things. Uh, so now what these things enabled was that uh, there's like a new paradigm of application started coming up, right? There's like decentralized exchange coming up, there's like DeFi coming up, and the, these things were not like previously possible before uh, out there. So they're peer-to-peer -peer kind of application, application wherein like you can cut in the middle uh, the middleware out there. So the previously in Web2 world, what happens is that basically everything is flowing from the top to down. So we call it top-down approach, right? right. And this get started replacing with bottom-up system, which means uh, communities coming together and they're collaborating over a common objective, right? And wherein each and individual game is being optimized. Like, uh, so that's the best thing that we want right now. So it's like now you are achieving this trustless factor that was not possible on the Web2 world before. Because in Web2 world, there's a lot of trust uh, hotspot that you need to go through to make that enable out there. So these are the applications that I've started building. But for our personal, at huddle01.com, uh, huddle01, it's like, it's massive. Like the application uh, that the file coin enables is very great. Because for the first time ever, like we can have the storage prices in negative than Amazon S3 prices, right? And now we can achieve this replication factor of 10, which is like becomes costly at the S3 itself. And now, uh, so at Huddle, if you see, like if, if, we, are, if we are doing meeting of five people and, uh, and we are doing this meeting at 720p, so the 10 minutes of that, of that meeting generates GBs of data, right. right? And now the scale at which we are operating right now, like we have processed 20,000 meetings and all of those things, this data becomes enormous, right? So you need some kind of streaming to storage kind of things. And, uh, Amazon S3 becomes economically infeasible to do so. And even uh, so, so what happened is that now you generate a lot of deals. And now the Filecoin network has been designed in such a way that if you have more deals, the prices start to go down because miners are competing basically right. on top of all of those things. So now you have this wonderful system, right? Like you have this data which is available anytime. Uh, you have this proof of data that your data is being stored. And then you have this replication factor. And another thing is that we were able to enable was geofencing, right? Now, people who want to store their data, they can store, okay, I want to store on this part of the country, or I want to store in that part of the country. This is not basically a very good choice with if you have this centralized infrastructure S3. Uh, so this is like one of the major factor in the success of Huddle01. Uh, Huddle like within a single click, we were like able to allow people to store their data on IPFS and Filecoin. Right, right. right? I mean, it's just incredible. Like, you, you mentioned so many different points there on how this opens up whole new business models. But the proof is also in the pudding. Like, if you were to say three years ago that, like, video conferencing would be on Web3 tech, I think many people in the audience would think you were crazy. I just learned yesterday that Masari completely moved off Zoom entirely and moved to Huddle01, you know, as their only video conferencing product, period which is a huge testament to the journey and all the little features that you've um, built over, the, over the, you know, the last three years. It's just incredible. Yep, highly humbled that people have started adopting the meeting out there. Uh, so what we just wanted to do is that we, want to, uh, we wanted to enable everything within a single click. Like he can uh, live stream on the live peer protocol. So, he, so now what is this called is called experiential learning. Right. Right. So it's like he experienced that thing. Okay, this Web3 technology works. It's not a promise. It's, it's there live. Yeah. And then they're curious about the technology and all of those things. So that's a wonder that's happening right now. Awesome. Laura, do you want to talk a little bit about how File Drive has entered in the new business models that it's opened up for your business? Yeah. I think the uh, best things of uh, Web3 is that uh, it lets you learning and growing with other community members together. 
since we uh, officially joined in the uh, Faircoin ecosystem, is I think it's in 2020, and we like as a participate uh, participate in slingshot competition. It's like for us as a like storage client, uh, everything is quite fresh for us. It's like uh, it's quite fresh for I think it's almost everyone in uh, Faircoin ecosystem at that time. It's like you, after uh, like uh, Colin you mentioned yesterday. The first step is to invite more storage resource in the network. The, uh, the step two is make more valuable data onboarding onto Firecoin network. And the whole process is quite fresh. And for us, uh, we like we are the storage clients. We need to know how to make this data actually like onto the network with the cooperation with the storage providers. And Slingshot is to give you give us the opportunity that we can work together with others and like uh, unlock the huge uh, price pool together uh, to get some uh, setup funding as well. And the, the most important is give our time and give our uh, time and give our resource to build tools into that whole process. I think it's, um, this model is really hard to find in Web2. And the other, another thing is like the Web3 is the, like a win-win-win uh, models. Like everyone in the whole process, the data story process can like get benefits. Like data clients, they store their data in decentralized way. Uh, storage client like us, we provide service for data clients and also provide tools or solutions for story providers. And story providers, they can get reward from full coin since they, we have the economic uh, system of Filecoin. So it's like everyone could like deeply uh, build things they need and also like share their achievement, share their uh, program with other one, uh, with other like uh, friends. With, uh, since we usually uh, build our uh, products or tools in the open source way, that we could invite other participants, other friends that to use it and to involve these tools together. And these tools could also bring benefits, bring uh, like uh, become useful for other people who are just came into the ecosystem. So I think that's the really fantastic things of Web3. It's fantastic. I mean, if you zoom out, the number, the amount of data that is onboarded onto Filecoin this year has 7.5x. 200 petabytes is onboarded, right? And most people think like, oh, this is you know storage clients and storage providers, but there's huge opportunities in the middle, right, for developer tools and other platforms to help onboard that data that File Drive is doing an amazing job on, and super critical, super critical in the ecosystem. It opens up all these different business models, and the fact that you know data storage is you know 0.1% of AWS, <laughs> you know today the amount of incremental profit that's available for different folks in the ecosystem, like developer tools in, in, the, in the Slack, you can definitely still have a huge price reduction in the cost of data storage while still giving massive profits to like folks in the, in the, along the value chain. So it's, it's really, really innovative that you guys joined this movement early. Yeah, um, for ourselves, like uh, actually in the first uh, phase one of Slingshot, we only stored 77 terabyte data and that's that phase, right. but uh, to uh, phase 2.4, we actually uh, achieved 2.8 petabytes in one phase. So you, you can see that we grow and everyone grows in this pro uh, process. For now, I think uh, we have uh, almost two petabytes data onboarding every each day, every day, in on Filecoin. I think that's incredible. It, that uh, for me, I cannot imagine we could reach that achievement together like back in three years ago. Fantastic, awesome. Um, I want to pivot to a pretty hot topic that's been uh, a thread through the conference, which is the launch of uh, smart contracts and programmability through the FBM network on Filecoin, which is set to go live in Q1. Um, there's a testnet that's building, there's over 25 builders building different protocols and different um, applications on FBM. Uh, and I wanted to understand what the implications were for some of your businesses and your industries. Uh, Nandit, maybe you could talk a little bit about how FVM enables um, a whole bunch of stuff for perpetual storage and Lighthouse specifically. Yeah, first of all, I'm like quite excited about FVM personally because this is something that I've been looking forward from like last few years since the launch of 
Filecoin, oh, that this thing is missing, and we need to have this. And just imagine, right, Filecoin itself is its own economy. People say it's a Filecoin economy. You can consider it, as Balaji would say, a nation state. And a product like Huddle, Lighthouse, File Drive, and Secure Finance, they're like cities in that nation state, but there wasn't any connectivity before FPM. And now I think FPM acts like how um, maybe Richard Branson would say the hyperloop between all of these projects uh, making composable to each other, uh, allowing various types of integrations. And we are building an interesting model around it, which is, again, perpetual storage. And one thing that I'm excited about, with particularly with FVM, is like unlike any other EVM-based chains previously, this is the first chain that will enable Oracle-less access to data. And not just enable applications like perpetual storage, but even like bringing reputation systems um, on chain and many other top applications. So I think we were even planning to do, oh, should we have like our own Cosmos SDK layer for uh, Lighthouse to build like this perpetual storage model? But this FPM has done our job like pretty easy. And we are part of this early builders program as well uh, with uh, like 25 other team. And like I'm very excited about this FPM and opportunities. It's awesome. I mean, it's going to make things like perpetual storage, you know, repair markets, all of that super easy. Um, Masa, maybe you can talk about some of the DeFi implications of FBM on Filecoin. Yeah. Uh, so FBMA, FBM is, uh, I think, is a better version of EVM, I would say, because uh, Ethereum, it's like uh, from computer science perspective, it's uh, a programmability, but uh, it's a computer without hard disk, right? So we have to always rely on external or off-chain things. So and for with FBM, we can seamlessly interact with uh, data, and so we can make completely decentralized uh, applications possible for DeFi. So for, from the finance application perspective, it is always um, difficult to like, onboard users. Every time you have to onboard users via KYC and AML, and with a, a com complete decentralized way, we can bring a decentralized KYC and an AML system. So once uh, our like address is KYC already, you can bring your KYC address to the DeFi pr um, project. So DeFi project, you can just seamlessly onboard and you can just start your project uh, and start using it. So that was like, um, smoothing the whole the operations. So I think it's um, uh, open up the massive opportunity for finance applications. Fantastic. I really encourage folks who are interested in DeFi to, you know, join the early builders program on FEM, figure out how we can port over, you know, easy DeFi smart contracts from the Ethereum network, you know, an EVM to FEM and open up a whole range of possibilities. There's already a billion dollar DeFi economy on Filecoin, but it's not very efficient because smart contracts, you know, kind of didn't lend itself to doing that. So we're super excited about that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about consumer applications uh, building on Web3 tech. Um, and, and really, like, I think some of these like, major applications that go to consumers, that, that really ha unlocks the potential of moving from a few hundred thousand users to billions of users over time on Web3 tech. And, uh, and it also just tests a lot of the scalability challenges of Filecoin IPFS along the way, right? Um, so, you know, Maybe we can talk a little bit about um, Hanalo One. What's your vision for like really scaling this to billions of people, both from an adoption perspective, but also from a tech perspective as well? Yep, yep. Uh, so basically, uh, so there's like uh, two challenges out there that you have to solve. So one is on the experience layer, and other is on the infrastructure layer right now. Uh, so on the experience layer, we need to have this personification of users, right? Now, there are like uh, Web2 users, they're 99%, and then there are Web3 users, they're like 1%. So uh, uh, like even for the DeFi ecosystem combined, and or even the maximum user that we had in Web3 would be X Infinity. Uh, it's like they had 400K users out there, right? right? And this is like not even a significant proportion what they're in Web2. So we need to have this, okay. Uh, what are the behaviors that they are possessing, right? And uh, it is extremely difficult uh, to break a human behavior, but it is extremely easy to make a new behavior, right? Right. So the way we do is that you enable new behaviors, the emergent behaviors out there, which is like possible on this platform, which is not possible on the previous platform out there. And if the technology improve, 
uh, underlying technology increase like improves uh, the behaviors also changes like new emergent behaviors start to come right uh, the perfect example would be like internet speed like if you see uh, uh, with uh, 10 years before we didn't had that internet access and speed and not even mobile phone so people there used to be like spa kind of application single page application but now if you see with future uh, like the more internet speed and more hand devices so short video platform started emerging up uh, the TikTok kind of thing. So you can see the passive consumption of uh, uh, data is coming into a real-time consumption of data with like your technology improving uh, beneath the, now, now this is like Web2 and it is also going into the Web3 part of it. So we can take bets here like, okay, uh, like why do you want to have this behavior? Like when you can have this new emergent behavior out there. Now once you see this new emergent behavior uh, out there, uh, you have this crypto economics, right? And with crypto economics, you have this incentive mechanism. And with these incentive mechanism, you can deterministically scale this system out to any amount, right? Uh, but uh, like taking example of Zoom and Huddle. Uh, so Zoom uh, catalyst, catalyst was COVID, right? But this, uh, this not necessarily can be the case with Huddle01.com because now you can deploy incentive mechanism and with that you can have this crypto economics wherein you can drive this initial adoption. But before that, what we want to have is that we enable this intrinsic motivation, right? Because uh, token can only act as a catalyst. Uh, if, right. you, if you use them as an, ex because they're extrinsic, extrinsic motivator out there. So this is on the experiential uh, layer that we can, uh, like how we can start this engine and how we can get it up to the rolling. So uh, I would like to compare this with a rocket, right? Uh, so rocket has some burn to get to the orbit, but once it get to the orbit, it is sustaining, right? Right. Uh, so this is how you would want to go thing, like you have this sustainability loops into your things and it becomes self-sustainable out there. But there would be a burn, right? But then with that burn, you have to go to the orbit. Uh, Regarding uh, uh, on the infrastructure layer is that uh, what we want to, uh, on the experience, so the way that we have targeted is here is that within a single click, like you can put it on the IPFS without learning about CAR, IPLD, multi-formats and all of this, which is very powerful. Like, so now people like uh, just, okay, this is storage button. Zoom also has the storage button. This is the same behavior. But when they receive a link, they receive an IPFS link, right? And then they're curious, okay, what's this thing? And then they realize, okay, they can access this out of anywhere. And now if, if S3 is down, IPFS can like, it's less chances, but then if it's on the file coin, there's an incentive like protecting the data availability. So that data is available uh, every time. So that's like, you are empowering the users right now. Uh, you are making them the owner of the data. It's just that the processing has been done by the huddle. Same here for the live care protocol. Like just, you just need to click a user. So this is like a mainstream adoption. So you have like different personifications out uh, there. Uh, so there's like these stakeholders. Now uh, the live peer also, they have like different stakeholders, miners, orchestra, right. and they have different. So everyone start to converse and the value starts to flow between uh, all of those things. So yeah, uh, like again, it will be with the time and then we just want to make uh, the learning curve of the Web3 technology to be abstracted out. Like right. uh, they should not even like, they just need to enjoy the best part of the technology without knowing how the technology works. I think that, I think for bear markets like we're in, you know, right now, I think this is like when the real value of, you know, platforms like Huddle One can really shine through, um, where, you know, you're really convincing normal folks to adopt a new behavior and make it extremely simple for them. So I'm, I'm super excited for real usage of Web3 tech to scale, you know, in this kind of time period. So that's yeah. fantastic. Um, Laura, I want to ask you about um, Filecoin Plus, which has been, you know, discussed during the conference quite a bit. Um, can you discuss the impact of Filecoin Plus, like what it is and how it impacts data users, how it impacts file drive and, and why it's important? Uh, yeah. Uh, so about Filecoin Plus, uh, as we know, it's uh, like an uh, incentive mechanism based on IPFS uh, 03. Uh, so it's like to bring uh, data caps, uh, like you can consider it as a label to uh, like to mark the verified deals. And the, the deals is successfully onto the Filecoin network. The story providers who store these deals could have the 10 plus. Uh, 10 times the uh, quality storage powers at the same time. So it's like to, I think it's also um, gave the uh, the power for storage clients. 
since it, uh, in the early stage of slingshot, it's really hard for us to find a storage provider to cooperate with. Since uh, instead of using CC sector to uh, increase their storage powers, uh, storage providers will like pay more, uh, pay more gas fee to store a uh, storage deal. But with uh, Fulcom Plus, uh, which could let like, storage pro providers more like they are, they have more passion to like receive and provide their service resource for these deals. So I think Fulcom Plus is really great for uh, developers and storage clients like Firefly. Uh, since we can have, uh, we don't need to like take a long-term negotiation with storage providers, and we do not actually do not need to pay them for these deals. Uh, for verified deals, most storage providers are willing to like provide free services. So I think it's really a great uh, programs, and also as a, a community members, we could actually give our ideas, suggestions for the whole. Uh, data cap allocation system. It's like it is governed by the community instead of uh, one single uh, organization or one single uh, roles in this ecosystem. That, that's fantastic. I mean, since Falcon launched, Falcon Plus has, you know, given incredible value to clients in that their storage is incredibly cheap. Um, but even more recently, um, through Falcon Plus, storage providers are now paying clients to store their data. So negatively priced storage is an incredible economic model that has recently appeared on Filecoin um, because storage providers can make so much, so much more by storing real verified deals um, versus kind of just, you know, um, other types of data or, or just committed capacity. So I think this is like a really important economic model that opens up a whole bunch of economic structures that the Web2 world just cannot ever compete with you know, in, in their current economic paradigm. And so I'm super excited to see how that plays out. Yeah. Well, this is simply amazing, right? Because uh, uh, the nodes in Filecoin, right, they have these two mechanisms of earning from the block rewards and from the market itself, right? Right. And now you have like one more Filecoin incentive layer. And then it's like now with economics, like you're driving these innovations out there where price can go negative. And, totally. Yeah. Totally. And awesome. this is the part I'm very much excited for. Right, right, me too. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, your advice to startups and builders and developers that are entering our ecosystems. Um, you know, uh, Masa and Nandi, you guys have gone through some builders programs, hackathons, accelerators, gone through seed funding. Um, can you talk a little bit about your journey and what advice you have for developers or founders looking to enter the ecosystem on things that they can do to, to make their lives easier and, and be, feel more connected to the community? Masa, maybe we can start with you. Yeah, um, so we started uh, from a hackathon and Protocol Labs uh, provided uh, like a whole range of support from like a very before seed round and then becoming a seed, we entered into accelerator program, which is also supported by Falcoin. And uh, also after the accelerator is over, then we, we raise, a, raise some money and we get some support of such as like a pitch training, et cetera. And also after raising money, we also like had a, a bunch of support like, a, like a hiring, you know, hiring a really key, you know, how to hire. And uh, we had a, like a many one-on-one -on -one meetings and also like a legal framework setting, uh, you know, it's with like an international coordination is required. It's really hard to find a, uh, the person who, who really knows about it. And Procol Labs did the same, same effort previously. So sharing this like a um, gather collective uh, knowledge, wisdom is so powerful. And it's so, we saved a lot of uh, efforts and time and cost. So that is super helpful. And for the developers, Procol Labs is basically uh, full of uh, engineers. And uh, we, we got a great guidelines of how to find a, a right person, uh, what is the um, best person for the decentralized uh, technology. Because uh, it's, it's hard to, for us to find uh, um, the decentralized uh, like developers because uh, there's not much uh, resources over there. So we try to entice Web2 people and come to a crypto space. So we're going to, yeah, we had a good conversation with uh, Protocol as Falcon team. Uh, how to find and how to tell our vision and story. And it really helps to build our team. And we are now eight team members with a strong passion to build a Filecoin and a decentralized finance technology. 
I, I really do believe talent is like the biggest blocker to Web3 applications and, and use cases scaling. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, oftentimes people are like, oh, well, it's capital, you know, you got to fundraise and things like that. But it's really like just like hiring really na native Web3 developers. That's the ultimate bottleneck. Um, the Protocol Labs network has actually been experimenting with this thing called the Talent Funnel, where we bring in and hire like a bunch of developers and then put them through this program called Launchpad, which is a six week crash course on Web3 tech. And so it gives them exposure to LibP2P, IPFS, to Filecoin, you know, to many, you know, you know, ecosystem players as well. And then there's like a matching protocol at the end of that, the final two weeks where we pair them with like folks like Securities Finance that are looking for specific types of talent. So, um, you know, for folks in the audience or folks listening here, if you are interested in joining the Web3 space or are a project in the ecosystem looking for talent, this kind of talent network plus launch pad might be a really good solution to experiment with as well. Nandi, do you want to talk a little bit about some advice you have for builders yeah. as well? Yeah, I think I have been through most of the programs of Filecoin and Protocol Labs. Uh, it's quite funny, I was about to go for my master's at NYU and COVID happened and I wasn't ready to start it like online remote. I was like, no, I don't have to do it. But I was like, oh, what else should I do or now? I, then I got to know, oh, there's a hackathon by Filecoin, took part in that and then another one took part in that as well, won that and then even got job at one of the portfolio companies, uh, Fleek, worked there for a while and then after that, uh, started working on Lighthouse as an open source project first, then got grants from Protocol Labs, did some great work. Uh, Protocol Labs team pushed us to you know, get a, another grant to uh, make it go further. And I think that set my base for the next thing coming up for us, which was Accelerator. So I got to know about Long Hash Venture is doing an Accelerator, and there were a bunch of others as well at that time, Outliers, Techion, et cetera. So I applied to all of them, got into the Long Hash one, and at that time, I was like, oh, I started from a hackathon project to open source project, but now I need to even think of, does it, what I'm building makes actually money and business and provide value to the users? And that's how that accelerator helped me to think more on the, uh, not just from like technical and hacker side, but even like marketing and business side of things. And they pivoted idea from this file coin Ethereum bridge, which Lighthouse was previously, to this perpetual storage model, uh, built our MVP, uh, got some like, early traction out, uh, then went out to uh, release our alpha, do our pre-seed, got some bunch of investors on board, uh, like Big Brain Holdings, Fen Bushi, Balaji, who's also now one of our angel investors as well. So yeah, I think my advice to any young builder out there, there's a whole funnel, uh, amazing funnel. I think I'm so happy I didn't, co like COVID happened in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, like I didn't go for my master's at NYU, but something great was, uh, waiting for me and now there are more things I think set up for us uh, as we are looking now for our seed round and uh, more traction scaling so I'm qu quite excited my one advice for protocol labs maybe double the number of hackathons you're doing yeah awesome fantastic <laughs> that's great I mean for the founders and builders that's exactly the advice I would have if you want to just like kind of get a feel for web3 tech join one of our many hackathons uh, we run between five and ten hackathons a month, uh, mostly there are longer running, so you can really get into the tech, develop a project over the course of two or four weeks, and then present it, and, and you know, hopefully win some prize money as well. Um, if you're ready to take the next step, there's our grants programs, micro grants, and others to like really support builders as they get their footing and get an MVP out the door. And then you know, the accelerator programs that you just mentioned are really, really good. There was 175 startups and teams just this year that raised the seed round after going through three months of mentorship and uh, MVP product adoption and a demo day. And so these are great platforms to really like flush out your idea, your business model, your product, get users, and then pitch investors in like a really compressed way um, and start to make some prog progress. Yeah. So it's fantastic. Um, so, uh, you know, we have just have a few minutes left. Um, I can't see very well, but is there anyone in the audience that has a question for some of our panelists here? I'll assume no, unless you want to sh stand up and shout it out. Hmm? Okay. Oh, there we go. Do you want to shout it out? Oh, we have a microphone here. Here. Thank you. Guys, great panel today. 
Uh, I haven't really uh, researched the architecture too much of how Filecoin works, but I know Ethereum 2.0 has plans to implement data sharding where you'll have 64 shards and each shard will store its own set of data. I was just wondering like, if that has implications on Filecoin and what the plans are for that. Um, I think what, what you are asking about is more like scalability thing, right? I think definitely to what even I saw in like uh, yesterday's presentation, uh, the protocol labs team is working with this like hierarchical mechanism within the protocol okay. itself. Uh, that will enable not just normal application, but like web scale applications, which can support like big apps like Messenger, uh, TikTok, like at large scale, like billions of users. So definitely there's a big work around um, hierarchical consensus which is going on. And yeah, to your point, definitely sharding and this point of even IPFS being this content addressing way to reference files and data, I think it, it can make the system quite infinite, scalable, or that you do things at a local or sharded level and then you need not worry about the final finality. So I think there's a lot of things been going on and, and will soon be launching in, I think, first quarter of next year. Oh. That's exactly right. There's, uh, it might actually be part of the FVM test net where they're testing out a few things like hierarchical consensus. And so I think you should definitely join some of those programs. It, it really has the potential to move like the, the whole paradigm of how blockchains move to consensus in a way that's like way, way more scalable. Like orders of magnitude, not just like hundreds of transactions per second, but like billions, trillions of <laughs> transactions per second. So I think it's a really, really important question. Um, and there's a few working groups that we should get people involved who are really you know, interested in that kind of scalability. Cool, thanks guys. Thank you. Right, if there aren't any other questions, uh, I just wanted to thank you guys for joining us, for being such an active member of the community, for being so welcoming of new builders and developers and community members you know, that are looking to, jo to join this ecosystem. You know, in a Web2 paradigm, like, folks are just tunnel vision, focused on their startup, their, their, you know, product, et cetera. But what I really appreciate about the four of you and many other builders in the space is how welcoming you are for other builders and startups and to, and to really strengthen the community at large because some of those tailwinds really helps all of us, right? Um, I'm super, super excited for folks to, you know, help Web3 cross the chasm. And, you know, developer tools, financial applications, consumer applications like folks on the stage, these are the ones that are going to move the needle, especially in the next couple of years, to, to get Web3 adopted by hopefully hundreds of millions of people and, and billions in the future. So huge round of applause for our panelists. Thank you so much for joining us and for being so supportive of <laughs>